The female orgasm is a natural bodily response that occurs as part of sexual arousal and stimulation. It involves coordinated activity between the brain, nerves, blood vessels, muscles, and hormones. Understanding it step-by-step -step helps explain how different parts of the body communicate and respond during sexual activity and why experiences can vary from person to person. The process begins in the brain. Sexual arousal usually starts with sensory input or mental stimulation, such as touch, visual cues, emotional closeness, memories, or thoughts. These signals are processed in areas of the brain involved in emotion, motivation, and pleasure. The brain then sends messages through the spinal cord to nerves in the pelvic region. At the same time, the brain releases chemicals called neurotransmitters, such as dopamine and oxytocin, which help increase interest, focus, and feelings of connection. As these nerve signals travel downward, they affect blood vessels in the genital area. Blood flow to the vulva, clitoris, and vaginal walls increases. This happens because blood vessels widen, a process called vasodilation, which allows more blood to enter the tissues. The increased blood flow causes swelling and sensitivity in the clitoris, which is a small organ rich in nerve endings. Although much of the clitoris is internal and not visible, it plays a central role in sexual sensation. At the same time, the vaginal walls begin to release moisture. This fluid comes from blood plasma that passes through the vaginal walls as blood flow increases. This lubrication reduces friction and makes stimulation more comfortable. The muscles of the pelvic floor, which support the bladder, uterus, and bowel, also begin to tense slightly. This muscle engagement is usually unconscious and increases as arousal builds. As stimulation continues, nerve endings in the clitoris and surrounding tissues send stronger signals back to the brain. The clitoris contains thousands of sensory nerve endings, making it highly sensitive to touch, pressure, and vibration. These signals reinforce arousal and further increase blood flow. The clitoris may become more engorged and slightly retract under its protective hood due to swelling. The labia, or outer and inner folds of skin, may also swell and change color because of increased circulation. During this phase, heart rate and breathing often become faster. Blood pressure rises slightly and muscle tension increases throughout the body. These changes are part of the body's overall excitement response, controlled by the autonomic nervous system, which manages automatic functions like heart rate and digestion. Specifically, the sympathetic branch of this system becomes more active, preparing the body for heightened sensation. As arousal continues, the body may reach a point called the orgasmic threshold. This is not a fixed point and varies depending on physical comfort, emotional state, health, fatigue, stress, and prior experiences. When stimulation is sufficient and the nervous system is receptive, a reflex response is triggered in the spinal cord. This reflex coordinates rapid muscle contractions in the pelvic region. The orgasm itself involves a series of rhythmic muscle contractions. These contractions usually occur in the pelvic floor muscles, the lower vagina, and sometimes the uterus. They happen at regular intervals, often less than a second apart. These muscle movements are involuntary, meaning they happen automatically without conscious control. The contractions help create the intense sensations commonly associated with orgasm. At the same time, the brain releases a surge of chemicals. Oxytocin increases, which is associated with feelings of relaxation, trust, and emotional bonding. Endorphins, which are natural pain, relieving and pleasure, enhancing chemicals are also released. These substances contribute to feelings of pleasure, warmth, and well-being. The combination of nerve signals, muscle contractions, and chemical release produces the subjective experience of orgasm, which can feel intense, pleasurable, and sometimes overwhelming. During orgasm, awareness of the surroundings may decrease as the brain focuses on bodily sensations. The prefrontal cortex, an area involved in judgment and self-monitoring, becomes less active. This temporary reduction in self-awareness can make the experience feel absorbing or freeing. The exact sensations vary widely between individuals and even from one experience to another for the same person. After the contractions slow and stop, the body enters a resolution phase. Blood flow to the genital area gradually decreases and swelling subsides. 
The clitoris and surrounding tissues become less sensitive as nerve activity returns to baseline levels, muscles relax, heart rate and breathing slow, and the body begins to return to its resting state. Many people experience a sense of calm, contentment, or sleepiness during this phase, largely due to the lingering effects of oxytocin and endorphins. Unlike males, many females do not have a mandatory refractory period, which is a time after orgasm when another orgasm is not possible. Some individuals may be able to experience another orgasm soon after the first if stimulation continues and comfort is maintained. Others may find the genital area temporarily too sensitive or may simply feel satisfied and not desire further stimulation. Both responses are normal. It is important to understand that not all orgasms feel the same or occur in the same way. Some are stronger, others milder. Some involve noticeable muscle contractions, while others are more subtle. Factors such as hormonal levels, age, stress, medications, and overall health can influence how orgasms are experienced. Emotional safety, relaxation, and a sense of comfort also play significant roles as the brain is central to the process. Problems with orgasm can occur when one or more parts of this system are disrupted. For example, stress and anxiety can interfere with the brain's ability to send and receive pleasure signals. Certain medications, especially some antidepressants, can reduce nerve sensitivity or alter neurotransmitter levels. Hormonal changes, such as those occurring after childbirth or during menopause, can affect blood flow and tissue sensitivity. Pelvic floor muscle weakness or tension can also change how contractions occur. Chronic medical conditions like diabetes or nerve injuries can affect sensation by damaging nerves or blood vessels. Pain during stimulation can cause the nervous system to shift into a protective mode, reducing arousal. Emotional factors such as past trauma, relationship difficulties, or lack of sexual education can also influence the body's response. In many cases, addressing these factors through medical care, education, or therapy can improve sexual function. The female orgasm is not required for health or fertility, but it is a normal part of human physiology and can contribute to well-being and quality of life. It reflects the complex interaction between the brain and body, showing how emotions, thoughts, and physical sensations are closely connected. Learning how the process works can help reduce confusion or worry and promote a more informed and respectful understanding of the human body. Overall, the female orgasm is a coordinated sequence that begins with mental and sensory stimulation, builds through increased blood flow and nerve activity, peaks with rhythmic muscle contractions and chemical release, and ends with relaxation and recovery. Each step depends on healthy communication between the nervous system, blood vessels, muscles, and brain. Variations are normal, and the experience is shaped by both biology and individual circumstances.